Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session for Wednesday, May the 10th, 2017. My name is Sagan Kay. I am the founder of Quantum Leap Futures. Each morning we get together in these live go-to sessions to take a look at the market macro to micro, uh, take a look at the structure of the market, and then we drill down uh, to our trade levels, our targets, and our main hypotheses for the day. We do create multiple hypotheses in order to have a plan in place before the market opens up. Then we determine how the market is reacting and then adapt the plan, which is closest to what the market is actually showing us. We do not try to predict the market. Nobody can. Uh, we can only react to it with a plan in place. This is a subscription room. If you're interested in checking it out, send me an email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com. There is no website. There is no blog. This is not a commercial venture. We do everything live here in the go-to each day. Uh, if you can please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results, and any trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. Okay, so a couple things I want to talk about right away. First one I want to talk about is the Globex tech gap, and uh, this is something that uh, I share with people, and... There's two scenarios that generally happen. Uh, the, and what I'm talking about is the, let me just get this over here so you can see it better. Between the ETH session and the open of the Globex, okay, so the close at 5 p.m. Eastern, and the open of 6 p.m. Eastern. If you open in a gap, okay, I've run the studies, or I've had somebody run the studies for me, uh, there is a 99.5% probability that that gap will be filled. That doesn't mean that you just immediately get into the trade uh, uh, right on the open, but you look for an opportunity to take trades in the direction of that gap fill. Uh, I got long last night at uh, 90, uh, 91.50 and got funded and then got taken out. Peter did, uh, I think he even got a better uh, entry than I did. No, I think he said he got one at uh, 91.50 and one at 91.75. Uh, and the key is to trade it into the, the gap. Now, a lot of times the trade doesn't get to the gap right away but that doesn't mean that the gap is not going to get filled and uh, Peter and I were actually talking about this last night you can go back and uh, and read it in the uh, in the chat I think it's in the chat I don't think we did it uh, privately but the I said if it you know if it doesn't close usually it's going to close within the first five minutes five to ten to fifteen minutes it's usually pretty quick uh, depending how big the gap is. But if it doesn't get filled, then it's usually not filled until later in the, uh, in the session, uh, usually after uh, Europe uh, opens. And you can see that it finally came and got filled, okay, uh, you know, just a few minutes ago. Both Peter and I uh, took the trade into it. But it gives you the opportunity to take trades in the direction of the gap, but just just like anything, you have to you have to maintain. You know, I got in, got funded, and got taken out on my runner uh, just in front of my Theo, and then I didn't try to even uh, trade it again. In fact, I didn't trade the rest of the night until I got up this morning and uh, and took ninety fifty uh, into uh, that gap fill. Um, but it's something to it, because of the high probability. Uh, it's something that you can trade towards, and that's what we talk about a lot of times is what are targets and having targets and trading towards those targets. Targets are not setups. Targets are simply high probability uh, locations that we expect the market uh, to go to. Anyway, I just wanted to share that. Um, let's take a look at yesterday. Yesterday, uh, we were looking for a rotation down into the uh, prior day value, finding re, uh, initiative buyers and uh, rotating up and uh, 
taking out the uh, weak high and then going up and uh, and uh, equalizing the two highs at the 240375, the new high that was put in in the Globex on Sunday night. Um, you know, the plan started out good, and they did come down to our first trade level and rotate it up. And, you know, well, we got up to this 2400. And yesterday I was talking about how the market has a tendency to sucker people at centennial numbers and I said you really if you're going to trade a centennial number you want to be in and funded prior to the uh, the uh, centennial number or short and funded prior to the centennial number because they have a tendency to go and chop or or uh, or uh, defend and not break through and this was a very uh, strong case yesterday where we came up and we just banged on it okay five times and we could not get above and then they just started rotating it down okay and basically we had hypo 2 play out which I said was uh, equal opportunity that uh, could happen uh, between hypo 1 and hypo 2 yesterday and we rotated and came all the way down and tested the range low uh, broke through it uh, by one point uh, didn't quite get to the 87. I thought we'd get to the 87.50 at that point in time. Uh, we didn't do it in the RTH, but we did go down and uh, and put a double bottom down here at 87.50. So this, you know, and you know, the buyers stepped in and we rotated in balance, and you know, we've got that balance sitting in that 23.93, 23.94 area from the last three days, and we closed in the balance. Now you can notice that the VPOC spent most of its day up in the 90, uh, 97 area and only shifted down on the close. And then overnight we were unable to get below the 87.50 and so far we've rotated back up and uh, we're currently trading uh, 91.75. Uh, we have created a weak high and we have created a weak overnight low. So it's a really uh, big toss up in terms of does this market rotate further down back into that 83 to 85 level or did we find our bottom, okay, and we continue to rotate up into the 94, 93, chop around there and then get continuation and take out this, uh, this weak high. Um, I'm putting my hypothesis at 50/50 again. Uh, you know, and this is what happens when we're trading centennial numbers and, and near all-time highs is one side's going to get a little bit of control but not have enough momentum, and then the other side test, uh, steps in and tests uh, the other side. So you've got to be really, really careful, uh, you know, trading and not get stubborn. Uh, in these scenarios because, you know, there's going to be a battle, a two-sided battle going on. So let's take a look at the news. We don't have a lot of news again today. We did have import prices came out better than expected. 10.30, we've got crude inventory. Uh, 1 uh, p.m., we've got the 10-year bond auction. And then 2 p.m., we've got the federal budget. And that's about it. Earnings, earnings continue to be okay. Um, there's not a lot of uh, big name earnings uh, after the market tonight like there was last night. Uh, NVIDIA was, uh, was a big uh, beat last night, so it's been surging in the pre-market trading. Um, taking a look at the uh, each day, I like to step back and just give myself uh, you know, context within the different time frames. So I use uh, can simple candlestick chart with 9 EMA and 20 SMA, and I'm looking for where we are within the trend in the different time frames, and what is the strength of the trend. Slope and separation gives me uh, strength of trend, and uh, and I'm I'm looking for you know uh, how strong it is in each of the uh, different time frames. You can see we put in a new all-time high. I don't know what's going on with my paper money. Um, I was looking at this this morning, and I know that the all-time high is 2403.75, but for some reason it's only showing 2401 right now. That's paper money for you. 
uh, but I checked in my live account and it's fine. I only use paper money for uh, you know chart patterns and for uh, the internals during the course of the day because I get the live data since I've got uh, I use TOS for my option trading. Um, so we got good slope and separation, strength of trend in the uh, in the monthly. Uh, the weekly high is 2403.75, even though it doesn't show it on here. It was put in in the Globex on Sunday night on the open. Our open of the week is 2402.50, uh, and we have a week high that we put in yesterday, uh, quad uh, quad top or quintuple top at 24. Hundred. Uh, so the, the trend is very strong. We don't challenge the trend on the weekly until we get down to 2365, uh, 75, and uh, that would put, put us below our weekly ATR. And I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Uh, going to the daily, you can see that we uh, did put in that uh, you know bit of a blow off top, and then we came down uh, from Sunday night, and we were testing. The low of the week at 87.50, which is uh, a, uh, a double bottom, and it is our daily 9 EMA. Uh, so this is a key level if we break this 87.50. I think if we break the 87.50, we're likely to come all the way back down to 83.50, and we don't know if this could be a bigger move. I said last night in the Globex, the way I was looking at the profile and things, it's looking awfully ugly and you know there are times where they tantalize you with that all-time high and then you know they they make a 20 or 30 point rotation off of it before finally going up and, uh, and taking it. It's exactly what happened with the uh, 2401. In fact, there was a much bigger rotation off of that 2401 before we finally came and took it out uh, last week. Um, but the trend is intact on the daily. On the intraday, as we move intraday, you can see that uh, we did break below the 9 and the 20 uh, overnight. Uh, we're currently trying to get back above the 9 right now. So uh, we do see some weakness coming in overnight. Uh, whether or not it's going to uh, be a continuation uh, move and the start of a downward trend, we don't know yet. But uh, it's giving us first clues that there is some weakness coming in. On the one hour, we were starting a downward trend, and now we've uh, come up uh, to fill that technical gap, the Globex gap, uh, I should say, uh, and we're above the 9 and the 20 right now. So again, no real information on the 1 hour or the 4 hour. On the 30 minute, you can see that we are starting uh, the possibility of upward uh, trend. We do have a bit of a technical gap right now. There is a naked cross up here that we left uh, in the RTH session yesterday at 2396.50. So if we get and accept that 93 area again, look for them to push through to the, uh, to the other side of that balance and up to this naked cross on the 30 minute. Going to the 15 minute, you can see that we are getting uh, an upward trend. We've got slope and separation. A test, uh, retest of the nine will take us down to 23.90.75, and there's no naked crosses above us, but we did leave one uh, just below us here. So write this one down at 23.89 and a quarter. Uh, but the trend is starting to go up on the 15 minute, and then on the five minute, we had a nice strong trend uh, coming up, and we've broken below it. Uh, watch this level at 90. I'm using 90.50 as my over underline uh, today, and I'll show you why when we get into the composite. So overall, on the larger time frame, the trend is still up, uh, but the intermediate uh, intraday is showing some weakness, uh, but we are fighting it right now. Uh, but we do have some targets both above and below. So if we take a look at the, uh, the structure, we were in this eight-day balance, and you know, we uh, accepted value at 83.50 after testing both sides uh, over the eight days. Then we had our breakout day. Uh, we did come back and test the 50% of the significant breakout candle. Um, and now we're trying to find balance and hold balance, uh, you know, 
at this 94 to 93. Our close from yesterday is 93 and a quarter. Our CHVN is 92.75 or microcomposite uh, HVN, whichever uh, one you want to use. I'm, I'm using the microcomposite simply because composite, we've never been here before. So it, it only can, the vo volume only consists of the microcomposite 3 day. Uh, we do have this, uh, this 91, but I'm actually using 9050. Uh, I'm using the shorter uh, time frame LVN and make sure that we're below the, uh, the CLVN or the microcomposite uh, LVN. 88 and a quarter is our next level of support. I'm actually moving it down slightly to that overnight low at 87.50 because I think if we get down here, we'll probably test that uh, 87.50 and most likely take it out. We will be inside of this distribution zone and below the 87.50, we have the value area high uh, from the eight days uh, balance at 87. So at that point in time, I'm thinking we're going to get at least 85, if not 83.50 and come down back into this balance. And this is our key destination, uh, you know, right now. Our next big target below is back down to this balance to see if we have to pick up late buyers to continue uh, the trend up. They can hold above this 90.50 and get back above the 91. Then I'm looking for that 93 area to 94 and chop around here and then hopefully go up and take out that weak high at 2400 and adjust the, uh, the uh, Globex all-time high with the RTH all-time high. So we have 2400 as our RTH all-time high and we have uh, which was 23.98, so we did take out the 23.98 yesterday. That's going to be an important level for us uh, as well. And then, of course, above it, the Sunday night high at uh, 24.03.75. Remember that our open of the week is 24.02.50 as well. So taking a look at the overnight, overnight inventory is, is basically about 95% net short. So if we do get uh, above that 93 uh, area, 93.50, the overnight high, we're going to get uh, a lot of shorts in the, uh, caught in the hole, and we could get a, uh, a spike up uh, and a squeeze on that. So taking a, uh, a uh, look at the Globex of moving our numbers over, our overnight high is 93. Our overnight low is 87.50, sitting right on top of that naked VPOC, which we left alone by four ticks. Uh, I doubt that we're going to get a uh, VPOC ch uh, ch uh, change at 23.89. We are seeing some more weakness coming in right here. Um, we've got the uh, 90, uh, 91. Uh, value area high, uh, but again, I'm going to be using this LVN right here. Uh, I'm going to be using the 90-50, and that encompasses the 91 and the uh, the 90. So I have this four tick uh, range that I want to make sure that I'm clearly through to either side before I try to execute any type of uh, of trade. And then that's about it. Uh, you know, we've found some serious balance here around the uh, the 89 overnight. So I would imagine they're they're probably going to test that at some point in time on the open. So taking a look at our composite, we'll finish up our levels and then get to our hypothesis. Um, the uh, 96 area is going to be a trade level for me, is the value area high, and I'll be looking for, as I said, most of the day our, uh, our VPOC was up here at the 97 and a quarter, so that is going to be my target above, and then I'll be watching this 98 area, 98 and a quarter, uh, because it was our prior uh, all-time high, and looking for a break. Uh, of this 2400, 
our targets to the upside. Our 20 period daily ATR is running at 15.86, so off of the bottom uh, of the night at 87.50. Our daily upside ATR target is 24.03, just uh, oh, oh sorry, 24.03.50, just uh, below the uh, all time high. Then we have these measured moves. There's three of them up here. I just grouped them together because they're all within four ticks of each other. And then the rule of 10. Our weekly ATR is running at 34.35. And off of the low, which we put in, the low of the week we put in in the Globex, uh, our weekly upside ATR targets all the way up here at 24.21.75. Uh, with three days to trade. So if we do get in uh, uh, above that 2401 again, uh, we've got to be thinking in the next few days, possibility of testing the uh, 21s in, uh, in the, uh, uh, in, during this week. Um, below the, uh, the 9050, uh, I'm going to be watching this 87 or this 8875 RTH low. Uh, it's where the V, just above the VPOC from overnight, and then of course below that I'm targeting the overnight low, which is a weak low. There's a double bottom down on that. And then all our levels below remain the same. We've got uh, the 80, 85, 50 area, and then the target at 84. Our daily downside ATR target off of the overnight high of 93, uh, 50 is down here at uh, 83. Uh, that can't be right. Let me just check that. Uh, 23, 93.50 minus 15.86. 23.77.75. I knew that wasn't right. I forgot to move it. Um, so we do have the 84 target. I'm front running this 83. And then we've got the uh, 80, 50 value area low from the microcomposite. And then below that, um, we got the 78 with the uh, this daily ATR target down. I'm going to put this target right here up to 78, just in front of that 7750. And then below that, our last week low is 7550, 7450 is our key line in the sand. And then our weekly ATR is down here at 2369.50. It's hard to say which is going to get hit, the 2421 or the 2369 area. Anyway, uh, we have shown some weakness overnight. Uh, I still think that we are going to rotate back up into this balance. So I am weary of the, weary, not weary, I'm weary of the possibility that we get a bigger move down, but based on the structure of the market, uh, I still think that uh, we're going to get some upside bias. So my hypo one and hypo two have equal 50-50 in my mind uh, in terms of biased. So my main hypothesis, hypo one, open auction in range, push down, test the range low, the overnight low, get a break of the overnight low, but find buyers somewhere between 80 750 and 85.50, rotate back up into range, fight the range, and then rotate back up into the uh, uh, the close and the naked VPOC from yesterday and the overnight high, chop around here, and then push up into the 94 to 96 area. I'm not looking for a lot of expansion uh, today, but we might get a late day probe to test the 2400 and possibly even uh, break through it. So that's my hypo one. Hypo two, which I put equal weight to, is an open auction in range, uh, a rotation up into the 93, 94, and then somewhere between the 93 and the uh, 97 area, 
I'm looking for uh, responsive sellers to step in, in and rotate us down through and come down and take out this overnight low and push down towards this 84 and close back inside of this balance down here. That's hypo two. Hypo three is a open test drive. Test the range low and the uh, the VPOC, the overnight high, and then find responsive sellers, I'm sorry, initiative sellers, and push down through to the 84 area, chop around down here, and then push down and come down and, uh, and test the 70s again and close somewhere between 77.50 and 83. That is hypo three. Hypo four is an open auction in range, failure to take out the overnight low. Find responsive buyers, come up into the 94, chop around the 94, and then push through, break through the 2400, and push up into the uh, all-time high and equalize the high at 2403 with maybe a late-day probe up into the 2410 basically a uh, breakout of day, uh, a breakout continuation day. Taking a look at gold. Oops, wrong chart. So we've come down and we tested the lower side. We talked about this yesterday but the possibility of coming down, if we didn't hold the 21 uh, area, that we'd likely come down and test the lower side of the balance, this 1420, and uh, bounce from there. And that's exactly what, was, what has happened. Uh, we have found uh, some buyers. Uh, we are uh, currently chopping between the uh, prior composite VPOC, and the uh, value area, or sorry, the CLVN, the low volume between uh, these two distribution zones. Our key line today is going to be right here at the 2590. Call it 26. If we get above 26, look for them to rotate up into the four-day balance at the 29 area and chop around in here with probably a probe somewhere up into the 32.33. If we do not break above the 25, look for continued chop in this area around 21.70. Remember, before we got the shift of the composite VPOC, and this composite goes all the way back to October 2008, this price was the most traded price. And I'll be watching for a composite shift either to the 21.70 back down, or if we come up here, uh, down, uh, up to the uh, 1230 area. So I'm looking for this composite to have a possibility of shifting, uh, depending on how much more volume we uh, trade in this area. Two days of balance. I just want to see the two day. is right here at the 2260. So uh, between the 2260 and the 2170, we want to see some uh, some strong support in this area. Anyway, I've gone long. Uh, I apologize that, but I had, did have some things I wanted to talk about. Uh, that's going to complete our pre-market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.